Lecture 2-3, the greenhouse effect and climate change. Now, we've gone over the greenhouse effect before, so we're just going to do a quick refresher. The greenhouse effect refers to circumstances where the short wavelengths of visible light, that is ultraviolet, from the sun pass through a transparent medium and are absorbed. But the longer wavelengths, we're talking more along infrared, of the infrared radiation from the heat objects are unable to pass through the medium. The trapping of the long wavelength radiation leads to more heating and a higher resultant temperature. So visible and ultraviolet can pass through most of our atmosphere except for the ozone layer. Again, UV is absorbed by the ozone layer. But the infrared is absorbed by gases in the atmosphere. And the infrared is re released by the, the ground and anything else that absorbed the initial light from the sun. It re-releases that light as heat or infrared radiation. So sunlight comes in, some of it passes through, some gets reflected. Some of the stuff that gets passed through gets converted into infrared light, which some can pass through, but others are absorbed by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, greenhouse gases are the gas molecules in the Earth's atmosphere with three or more atoms uh, because they can capture outgoing infrared energy from the Earth, and which warms the planet. So they capture the infrared. Uh, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane are the big three. Uh, we talked about water vapor changes a lot from day to day, so they can go from 0 to 4% of our atmosphere. Uh, but the relative amounts of water vapor in our atmosphere uh, aren't really changed by humans as much. Uh, carbon dioxide and methane, they are the ones that we do have a greatest impact on. Other gases, of course, ozone, we know that absorbs ultraviolet. CFCs, which stand for chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, these are actually a dangerous chemical that we release into the atmosphere from aerosols to air conditioning units. Uh, they actually deplete the amount of ozone that can form and nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is pretty much NOx. Uh, pretty much any nitrogen with any oxygen can form that. Now, a little graph showing the different concentrations of carbon dioxide compared to methane compared to chlorofluorocarbons. Carbon dioxide is by far of these three the largest greenhouse gas. Um, but methane, even though it's much less, can be 20 to 30 times as effective. So we still have to pay attention to methane. Even though there's less methane, it's more potent. Uh, it's more powerful. CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, uh, are 10,000 times as effective. So again, much, much smaller than, uh, we're talking a couple hundred times, uh, well, 30 to 40 times really, sorry, uh, smaller than carbon dioxide, but again, very, very effective. Now, carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless, non-flammable gas and the most prominent greenhouse gas in our atmosphere. Um, of course, you know carbon dioxide because you produce it every time uh, when you breathe. When you breathe, you produce carbon dioxide. But other sources of carbon dioxide, of course, are the burning of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels contain carbon in them. And when that combines with the oxygen in the air when they burn, that's where we get our CO2. That's where we produce our carbon dioxide. So really, if you burn anything that's organic in nature, any carbon-based, so uh, trees, plants, you burn fossil fuels, which are old plant matter, so coal, oil, natural gas, you're going to produce carbon dioxide. Now, the big part of this is that most of the carbon dioxide that we put into our atmosphere can be recycled through photosynthesis. But... Fossil fuels are really ancient carbon dioxide. There's stuff that's been trapped inside the earth for a very long time. So releasing it now, um, our atmosphere can't deal with that. The amount of plant matter we have cannot can deal with the recycling of all that carbon dioxide. And um, you keep releasing more and more and more of it. I mean, every time you drive anywhere, you're releasing carbon dioxide. Every time you uh, heat your house with natural gas, that's releasing carbon dioxide that's pretty much been locked up for a very long time. Now the oceans play an important role in regulating the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere because CO2 can move quickly into and out of the oceans. Once in the oceans, the CO2 no longer traps heat. So the oceans are a great sink where all the CO2 can be held. Uh, CO2 also moves quickly to the atmosphere and the land biosphere, material that was or was is or was living on land. Of the three places where carbon is stored, atmosphere, oceans, and land, uh, approximately 93% of the CO2 is found in the oceans. The atmosphere has the smallest amount of carbon. Now, as oceans warm, 
this is a very important note to take. They hold less CO2. They can't hold as much. And so if our oceans warm up, they're going to release more and more carbon dioxide. And if they're holding most of the carbon dioxide and they start to release it, then we start running into problems. Now methane. Methane is a colorless, odorless, flammable gas. Uh, methane, because it is odorless, anytime we use it, we put in artificial smells um, like uh, anything like methane and propane. They don't have smells to them. So we have to add like the rotten egg, the sulfur smell into them so you can detect them. Uh, methane is formed in plants decay when there's very little air, often called swamp gas because it is abundant around water swamps. Bacteria that break down organic matter, that's once living stuff, and wetlands and bacteria that are found in cows, sheep, goats, buffalo, termites, and camels produce methane naturally. Humans can produce methane also, just not as much. Now, I want to point out the cow part for a second because we have a lot of cows in the world and they produce a lot of methane and a farmer could actually help pr uh, fuel their own operation by capturing the methane that a cow releases and using it as a fuel source. And there are some farmers that do this and it's actually a lot better for the environment than if they were just release that methane. Uh, also, another source of methane is landfills. Anytime we put our stuff in landfills, we naturally produce methane in there, and we either have to capture it or release it into the air, because if it uh, just built up in the landfill, uh, you'd have a very explosive situation. Uh, each year we add 300 to 500 million tons of methane to the air by raising livestock, coal mining, drilling for oil and natural gas, rice cultivation, and garbage sitting in landfills. It stays in the atmosphere for only 10 years, but traps 20 times more heat than carbon dioxide. So methane is one of the ones that we pay close attention to. Now because of this, there have even been some authors written books about how, how cows are destroying the environment. Uh, we have a lot of cows. You think of all the beef, all the milk, any of the dairy products you have that had to come from a cow. Um, well, they had to live for a while. We let the cows live for a while. They eat a lot of grass and other stuff, and they release a lot of methane as part of their natural process. Uh, so cows really release a ton of methane, and there one area we could cut that down is by capturing it in closed spaces where we can raise our cattle. Now here are a couple graphs showing the levels of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide since about the year 1000. Now, of course, we haven't had instruments around measuring for that long, so we look at evidence in glaciers. We look for evidence uh, according to tree rings even can tell us. So there are multiple ways we can actually figure out the levels of these gases throughout time. Um, but the important thing is to note is around 1800, oops, sorry, my line's not very straight here. Around 1800, you start seeing this sharp uptick. And one of the biggest things that started happening in the 1800s, of course, is the Industrial Revolution. Now, why is this so important? Because, well, when we started having revolution... Sorry, I can't spell today. Uh, when we started having factory after factory, their main power source was coal. So when we burned that coal, we produced a lot of carbon dioxide. All that carbon that was locked up in the coal now became released in the atmosphere. Around this time, we also started cutting down more and more and more trees. Now, those trees normally would be pulling that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, but now that carbon dioxide is out there to build up very big effect. Now this is a measurement taken from Mauna Loa, this is in Hawaii, a monthly average carbon dioxide concentration since 1958 and you can see that easily visible increase. Now of course you see up and down because carbon dioxide does change with the seasons but if we kind of just think about the average of all of these and you just see that shooting upwards. Uh, 2004 was the last year that this was recorded, uh, at least according to this graph. I couldn't get re more recent data. Uh, but you see this in the like 50-year span, a giant increase in the levels of carbon dioxide. Now, before I get to the evidence, talk about this a little bit. These greenhouse gases trap and heat in our atmosphere. The amount of greenhouse gases go up, they trap more heat in. And uh, the bad thing about this is a domino effect. As more heat is trapped in, that causes more processes to release more of those greenhouse gases. Talk about the oceans. As the oceans warm, they release more carbon dioxide. Well, that carbon dioxide is going to warm the atmosphere, which will warm the oceans, which will release more carbon dioxide. And you see it's just a very huge domino effect 
that can be caused by this. Now, that is the reason why our climate's changing. It has to do with greenhouse gases. Now, the evidence that our climate is changing, it's getting warmer on average. Now, why am I saying climate change instead of global warming? Well, it's because a lot of people don't get the understanding that if our average goes up, that means that some places can still experience cooler weather. Uh, look at the stock market. The stock market has been going down for a long time, but some stocks have actually gone up. It's just that the stock market on average has gone down. Some individual things has gone up. Apple stock has gone skyrocketed the last decade, while the rest of stocks have gone down. So the average climate of the earth is going up. Some places may get cooler, but the average is up. It's been warmer. Uh, even a couple degrees Celsius change is a huge change when we're talking about the amount of energy that's trapped in the oceans, that's trapped in the atmosphere. Now, other evidence that our climate has been changing more so than it has in the past. Uh, polar ice melts. Uh, we're not going to see any ice in the North Pole in the next couple of years in the summertime, and that's a new thing. Uh, we're also looking at the South Pole. We're seeing uh, a lot of the land-based ice is melting. We're seeing an increase in oceanic ice. Uh, but the land-based ice is a big thing that's changing because as that land ice melts, that water's going into the oceans. That's part of it raising the sea levels. Uh, as glaciers melt on land, that water has to go somewhere. It goes into the ocean, and ocean levels go up. And I'm going to skip this one for a second. Um, you look at some ocean cities. They have been mapping the rising ocean levels, and they're losing land quickly. There are some island nations who may not be around in 100 years because at the rate to which the oceans are increasing. So we will lose a lot of shoreline. We're going to lose a lot of the smaller islands. And a lot of the bigger islands, even they are going to lose a lot of places. We have a ton of stuff that are based on shorelines, all our ports. you, you got to think about that's going to be kind of a very dangerous thing. Uh, plant and animal migration. You can even see this from space. Plants don't normally think about migrating. But as we see year after year after year, as we see this gradual move towards the poles of various types of plants. Now, plants that normally wouldn't exist at that latitude now are able to move farther and farther north because it's warmer. Uh, same thing with animals. Animals are easier to see their migrations, and we see them migrating towards the poles. Because, again, it's getting warmer, so temperatures that you, they used to experience at a lower latitude before, they can now experience at a higher latitude. Uh, we see the changing of sea and atmospheric currents. That's a big thing that's driving our weather. Uh, as those currents change, our weather will change. And because of that, we also see more extremes in weather systems. Uh, we may see more powerful tornadoes, more powerful hurricanes, more numerous named hurricanes or very powerful hurricanes. Uh, we have all this evidence of climate change. 97% of climate scientists, and I mean climate scientists, not people, climate scientists, the people who actually study the climate, all agree the, uh, the climate's getting warmer. We have all this evidence on here. The only question we really have now, because we can't get a definitive answer on this, is why. I mean, why is the climate changing? Is it human caused or is it natural caused? And this may be something we won't be able to figure out for a while, but we have to look at the facts. Carbon dioxide, among other greenhouse gases, has steadily increased since the Industrial Revolution. The rate of warming has increased since the Industrial Revolution. Yes, we are in what we call an interglacial period where we see a natural warming of the Earth, but that rate has gone up since the 1800s. Um, we can see our own impact on the environment in a lot of smaller ways, but it's hard for a lot of people to understand that we can have an impact on the global environment, and that the atmosphere itself, that the oceans, that they can be caused, they can change because of us. Um, I, but we can't say definitively is a human cause or not, but it's safe to say that humans have some sort of impact on this, if not the majority of the impact. So, the climate is getting warmer, that is a fact. The only question we have is why. Again, the climate's getting warmer, that's a fact. The only question we have is why. And that's what the science says, that's what the data says, that's what our measurements say. 97%, that is a very high number to get any group to agree on anything. Uh, so, if you have questions, make sure you ask me. This only gets politicized by politicians. Um, you talk to a climate scientist, they say, oh, there's no politics to this. The climate's getting warmer.